Hello peeps, Struggled here, bringing you another StarMate tutorial. Today we are talking about how to build proper power management. The question of how to properly build power management depends entirely on what you want to build. It basically comes down to two other questions. How much power do I need and how to build the required power most effectively. For this tutorial, we use this container calling it an entity, for it could be a ship, a turret, a drone or a station. I just did equip our container with a few demonstration systems. So to answer the first question of how much power do we need, that is basically the sum of what our systems require. So how to figure out what our systems require. In case of weapons, uh, for example, let's take these cannons. Uh, I'd like ignore these. You want to open up this and you see it takes 300 per shot. It shoots 10 times a second because those are milliseconds, right? So 300 per shot times 10 means 3K power every second. Since we can only fire one weapon, maybe we should have a look at the missile weapon instead, for that might use more power. So the missile requires 144k power every 90 seconds. This means the amount of power divided by the amount of seconds means it approximately needs 1600 each second. So this is what we need to factor in for our power regeneration. For being able to fire this weapon though, we need at least those 144k in our power storage. Now pulling the numbers from our guns was pretty easy, but how about systems like the radar jammer or the overdrive or for example if our entity needs thrust, like how much power is the thrust going to need, right? Lots of those systems are based on a ship's mass. To figure out a ship's mass, I suggest we just fill it up with systems. Something we could easily remove again, so I just pick the um, power capacitor here. Now we know how heavy our ship's going to be. Like the ship's m or entity, you know, it does not have to be a ship, it could be, you know. Anyway, the full mass would be 117. I just rounded up those 0 0.2. Anyway, 117. Meaning, if this should be a ship, then depending on how agile we want it, its thrust should be around 117 up to 350, because 350 roughly is about two and a half times 117, right? So that is an interesting information already, because next step we could do is just check out how much power would a thrusting system require that provides a thrust around 350. So for now, we just want to know how much power, for example, the radar jammer is going to pull out of our system. And we see here now that's 5,845. Regarding the other systems, for example, let's undo that for now. For example, the overdrive or another passive effect, the iron effect here, we would have to, you know, adapt those to actually fit the percentages we want those systems to work on. Because those percentages also are determined by the mass of the ship to block count of that system ratio. So we are not going to do this for now because this is topic of another time. We are just going to focus on how to get all those values together. Actually, you have to build up the systems and then just check how much power do they actually need. If you are unsure about it or if you can't look up stuff properly, it might also be a nice thing to just watch your energy bar back there. You see, we are at 95.3% and then just activate, for example, this overdrive effect and we see it's pulling about roughly 40 something-ish power each second, right? All right, now either through experience or by really summarizing all the single power costs of all our systems, some when we came to the conclusion that this entity would require 
x power per second generation, right? Now the next question would be how to build this energy effectively. Now let's see what the Starmate wiki has to say about how to build power. Now to summarize this, the first thing we need to know is that there is a soft cap. It depends totally on settings and if you want to go beyond the soft cap, each power reactor block will just add a static value. The default settings for the game in July 2016 is like if you want to go beyond 2 million power regeneration per second, each other reactor block will only add 25 energy per second. So you can build them any way and shape you want because you know, you are beyond the soft cap. Now for every day's building like below the soft cap, there are two things you should remember. First, use as few groups as possible and second, make the group spread out in dimensions as far as possible. Now, what makes a group? A group consists of power reactor blocks touching each other. This is one group of two blocks and having a sum of dimensions of one wide, one height and two long, which means four. One plus one plus two is four, right? So the sum of dimensions part is pretty important because that's a way in the formula which lets us increase the efficiency of our reactor modules by spreading them out over the dimensions. How to measure efficiency actually? We have to take a look into the power recharge system and basically efficiency can be measured by the total recharge divided by the blocks which provide it. So each power reactor block is worth 119 power per second. Now here I extended the group a little bit to show you what happens if you do not add to the sum of dimensions. Those are six blocks and they generate 764 power per second. Now let's say we add another three blocks, which should of course bring more power, right? It does, but only 75 more power than before because those three blocks did not add to the dimensions because the entire group is still three wide, one high, and four long because those three blocks just added their basic 25 energy per second to the group it dropped the efficiency of the entire group below 100 energy per second per block used this little group gives us 351.1 energy per second two of those groups give us 702.2 energy per second now four of those groups give us 1404.5 instead of 0.4 but i guess this is just a rounding error now if the efficiency stays the same where does this saying come from that we should work with as few groups as possible. Well, now I rearranged those 12 blocks we used um, in kind of this more complex manner and we got more energy out of that. As you can see, it's not much, but the basic idea is if you reduce groups and you are still able to grow the remaining groups in dimensions, for example, those which basically grew one block up and one block wide and yeah, so we have two of the bigger ones and then this one two block group sucky one in the middle if we basically reduce the amount of groups by at the same time increasing the use dimensions of the groups we still get a win out of it now not everybody is the tinkerer not everybody likes those complex shapes not everybody likes to think about uh, how could I make this the most effective as possible. Building in the most effective way becomes a real art in Starmate, especially because ships are not that cubish normally. So this can be a bit tricky at times. So anyway, here's a tip for you if you just want to stay somewhat efficient and not bother too much. What I would suggest is building your power in lines along the longest axis of your ship. These patterns, for some reason, just following the longest um, dimension, those are quite effective. There is very little room still for improvement. Yeah, people which actually know how to improve still will and still have the upper edge. But this is kind of what will give you a very solid foundation to build upon. So, yeah, 
that's it thanks for watching please leave a like if you liked it and see you guys next time bye